Hey guys, been a long time since we were at the messy workbench. To be honest with you, I didn't have any plans to make a video out of this project, but I ran into a problem that in looking into it is fairly common, and so I thought I would share with you the solution at least if uh, your version of the problem is the same as mine. See, here's what I'm trying to do. I don't know if you can see that in the glare or not. This is one of those 10, maybe $15 cheapo Chinese power meters that you can wire up to determine how much voltage is left in a battery, how much current you're drawing out of it at any given time. And because it knows those two things, it will calculate the power draw, the energy draw, the state of charge of the battery, all kinds of good things, um, assuming you tell it what kind of battery you're starting with. It is only a discharge monitor. It only measures current flow one direction. So uh, unfortunately, it won't tell you if your battery is charged, but it will tell you if it's getting ready to go dead, which is a real handy thing, especially with these lithium iron phosphate batteries that we're all using for ham radio and trolling motors and everything else now because a lead acid battery, you used to be able to put a voltmeter on it and have a pretty good idea whether it was 30, 40, 70, 80% charged. Not so much with the LifePo. They hit, in the case of a 4S pack, 12.8 volts, and they sit there from 97% charge down to about 4% charge. So you really need some sort of a meter if you're in a situation where you wanna get the most out of your battery, but not too much or not be caught off guard when it goes dead. All of which is well and good, but it relies on this thing being able to accurately measure current and voltage to do its various little calculations. The voltage measurements typically are pretty close on these guys, but the current, well, that depends. Uh, up to 10 amps, you can wire this thing and there's a, there's a little shunt inside of here. It's a completely self-contained package and they seem to do as well as any old cheapy voltmeter. For currents higher than that, you have to wire this shunt into your circuit so that it can measure the voltage drop across that to calculate the current. Let me give you a close up of this and show you what the problem is. Okay, what I've got here is my 300 watt, three ohm load that I use for all of my battery capacity testing. Uh, this gizmo right here is called a shunt. It is nothing more than a very, very low resistance. In fact, if we get out the multimeter and test this thing from connection to connection, it comes up as a 0, 0.0 ohm load. It's less than one tenth of one ohm. It's too low for this multimeter to measure. However, if we set the meter to the millivolt scale, you see if I short the leads, I actually get zero millivolts. And let's crank up the power supply. Let's run five amps through this thing. And let's see what we get in the way of a voltage across the shunt. 3.7 millivolts. So this thing is not zero ohms resistance. If you run five amps through it, you get a 3.7 millivolt drop across it. And so it's by measuring that 3.7 millivolt drop across the shunt that this thing is supposed to know that there's five amps running through it. Here's the problem. I'll turn off this light so maybe you can see the display a little bit better. But right there, 4.83 amps. This thing is reading low. Now before you guys start sending me hate mail for the entirety of the Eastern Hemisphere, remember that this unit comes with a shunt that has a measurement range of up to 100 amps and it's advertised as being 1% accurate. That means plus or minus one full amp, that it's only off by 170 milliamps, and at that, at the very, very bottom end of its measurement range, is pretty darn good. It's uh, almost six times the published accuracy. So I can't complain, but by the same token, I can't really use it like this. Um, 170 milliamps is more than my radio draws on receive. So my battery capacity measurements are gonna be way, way off if I leave it like this. Of course, the formula for computing the current based on that voltage measurement is just Ohm's law, V equals IR. And uh, I really wish that one of the billion people in China had thought to make the value of R configurable in the software because uh, this would be a real short video. But unfortunately, they did not. Uh, so what we're left with, if we want to increase the reading on the current, is we need to physically increase the millivolts, the drop across the shunt, 
which we're going to do by making the shunt just a tiny little bit more resistive. You might have caught the use of the word fortunately in the last shot where I said we have to increase the value of this shunt. Well, the reason I say fortunately is because that's a relatively easy operation. You may be able to see already right here in the side of the thing, there's a slot cut in it that makes the shunt just a wee bit narrower right here in the center than it is on the rest of it. That slot is what they cut at the factory to try and make this thing the right value of R to match the software. This narrow spot increases the resistance of the shunt just a tiny little bit. And so if we come in here and either make that slot wider or cut a few more slots in the shunt, we will increase the resistance of the shunt just a tiny bit, but hopefully enough to read 3.75, 3.8, whatever number of millivolts across here it takes for this thing to think that we're pushing five amps when we're pushing five amps. If we were in the boat where this thing read high, let's say it was saying 5.1 amps instead of 5.0, we would need to decrease the resistance of this shunt, which on paper is a relatively easy thing to do. You would just shorten it. But as best as I can tell, this thing is epoxied together in there. There's no way to get the ends off. So I'm not sure how you would go about shortening this thing. Your best bet, honestly, if you need lower voltage for the same current going into the meter, is to lengthen these red and uh, red, blue and yellow wires so that you get some voltage drop from the actual measurement point of the shunt into the meter. Okay, well, after a couple of swipes at this slot with old uh, trusty Rusty here, what we have essentially done is narrowed the shunt at the pinch point here which will slightly increase the resistance between points A and B, which for a given current flow will create a larger voltage between A and B. And hopefully that shows up now as a proper current reading on the meter. Let's hook it up and see. Everything's hooked back up. I'm gonna try this shot with the lights off so you can see the display. Hopefully the GoPro doesn't freak out too much. Anyway, let's kick this pig. Go ahead, turn the power on, put five amps through the system and see what the meter reads. Hopefully you guys can see that, 5.00 amps. That's not a bad result for about five minutes of work that didn't cost anything. Now, do I really believe that this meter is now accurate within 10 milliamperes uh, throughout a zero to 100 amp range? Of course not. There's no possible way that I'm getting that kind of accuracy out of a $15 meter. What I am going to get is a relatively accurate count of the number of watt hours of energy that I've pulled out of whatever battery I'm hooked up to. And that's pretty cool because watt hours are really the fuel gauge for a battery. You can test a battery using a known load and measure, okay, how many watt hours of energy are actually in this battery. If you can then count them while you're consuming them later, you know, you know, within a percent or two of your state of charge of the battery and how much power you've got left. In my case, I'm shooting for 75, maybe 80% depth of discharge on the LifePo 4 batteries that I'm using. So if I'm off by a percent or two, more than good enough for my purposes. So it still needs a case and some power poles to be convenient to use out in the field, but you've seen one 3D printer project, you've seen them all. If you use some sort of a power meter with your batteries in the field, I'd love to know what your setup is. Leave me a comment down below. And in the meantime, especially these days, stay safe, YouTube.